Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about graphene. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck we are talking about. Well, we are talking about smaller cluster of graphite. Graphite that is used in your pencil tip. So graphite, if you are familiar with uh, its structure, so to say, crystal structure, is that it has layers and there is a weak bond between these layers. That's why graphite can hold itself together, just does not fall apart like a you know dust or powder, simply because there is a weak bond between these layers. But if you can get one of these layer independent, it's like completely independent, and if it double bonds against itself, it will become graph. Uh, basically graphene so it's a stable crystal structure now how the heck it's stable because if you are familiar with carbon you know carbon needs four bond to become stable that's why diamond is so strong it has like all the bonding that it needs it has already done with itself so same goes in graphene so if you find graphene structure on online you will find something like this. basically you will take one carbon and it will have like one bond two bond three bond four bond now you take the second carbon is like okay one two bond is already occupied from second one third bond and four bond so every carbon is four bonded so it does not have the weak bond now that is the reason why graphite is a uh, like while strong it's not indestructible uh, because the weak the, the weak bond is like basically making it weak now this weak bond becomes like a diamond bond where it becomes indestructible because it's completely satisfied it's like okay we all need like you know four pairs of hand they're all got their four force of hand taken care of it's basically a stable crystal structure and it is single atom thick that is the interesting part it does not require like in graphite like where it, there is a three dimensional to it it is single layer all of the carbon is bonded to four links so how the heck this graphene craze started well uh, think of it this way the idea the science the technology that was already there like people always already was thinking about it uh, making it out like you know figuring it out how does it work but like the first time which we uh, where we observed like undeniably like this is graphene because i told you like that there is a tangible difference between graphite and graphene because of that four bonding uh, the first time it was observed it was like electron microscope in 1962 so it is a something that was people have been studying and be even before that it was like a, a theorized and hypothesized all that jazz happened so we saw it but we could not do anything why simply because we could not make mono atomic layers basically one atom thick layer we could not do at that time like the best people have gotten was like 100 layers so might as well be a graphite at that point so it was like you know research was happening but no progress was happening but in 2004 these two gentlemen basically andrew uh, i'm not gonna pronounce his name and costio these two gentlemen figured it out something very interesting they took graphite block they took cellotape and just did peeling off peeling off peeling off again and again and at the end they reached a single layer now here's the interesting part you can see a single layer thing so reliable mono layer creation is the reason why they got uh, basically a Nobel prize because once this has been done then people can like you know put under modern electron microscope and you can get image like this where you can actually see the lattice structure and all that jazz this is a, again this is a false color image uh, but you get the point like we can actually see that structure that we always theorized about hypothesis about and this is the reason why this graphene craze started in 2005 like one uh, once they figured it out it can be done so if you go online and you type graphene, like it, there is an enormous amount of potential about this material. Like it might as well be a magic material. It might as well be like it's a, you know, graphene is the strongest material tested in a lab. And that's absolutely true. Flat out, it's like, bro, steel is like, bro, nothing. Uh, like, uh, you know, let's say Kevlar, bro, nothing. Uh, titanium is like, bro, nothing. Basically flat out, this is the strongest material we have ever tested in a lab, flat out. And it's made out of a normal carbon. Now that is a very interesting thing because if you are familiar with, let's say, physics, uh, let's say in case of nuclear fusion you are familiar with the fact that while you are burning normal hydrogen you have to have a specific uh, you know isotope or uh, fancy things of it basically deuterium and deuterium and in, in, in case of helium you can't just use normal helium you need helium 3 again which is only found in moon so in those sort of scenario you can make normal stuff into a fancy stuff but you uh, you need a stock that is very complicated here it can be done by normal carbon not some fancy carbon which has like you know fancy isotope or things of that nature normal carbon we're good to go so it is something that we can create we don't have to do mining on more so that is another aspect that's why like people are like hey we can actually push this it's not something like uh you know neobinium and uh, other uh, magnetic materials where only china has the mining facility for that and one atom thick is visible now you might be like is it one atom should be too small to see well that's absolutely true. however it absorbs specific spectrum of light visible light it absorbs red and green so for that reason it becomes a very kind of translucent and you can easily see it basically if you made a one atom thick of gold it will be more or less absolute transparent this 
Uh, even one atom, you can easily see it because it absorbs that. Like, because it's absorbing that specific spectrum, it becomes translucent. So you can see it. Like even though it's one atom thing, you, many of you might be like, one atom should not be visible. It's visible because it's absorbing it. Now, it's not only strong. Now, making something strong is one thing, but your drill bit is ludicrously strong. That's why it can go through steel. But making it light. Now, that's the interesting part. It is very strong, very light. Now, as of now, the lightest solid ever made by man is aerogel. In aerogel, aerogel mixed with graphene is the lightest solid known to man. As of now, um, as of me making this video in 2019, nothing has beat this. Basically, that is why like they're showing such a large hunk uh, balanced into, you know, flower petals. Basically, it cannot even press flower petal. It's bit more dense than air basically at this point in time so and in terms of uh, conductor how good of a conductor it is because all atoms are uh, like you know basically all uh, what you call path possible electron path is low resistance it is very good for uh, basically electron transmission because you have to understand electron does not travel at light speed it takes time so if you have a copper conductor let's say of 100 meter it takes a certain amount of time this is like can transmit much faster than that how much faster again there is a dispute on that and i, I will explain other, uh, those things in future you can make interesting things like water purifier out of this smoke detector out of this aerogel out of this so it's very close to wonder material so what this wonder material will allow in simple terms better everything imagine everything that you are wearing just becoming better so one step water purification is feasible this guy invented a system where he created graphene hair now again this is not graphene normal graphene is some with extra thigodom and extra hoo-ha so this allows water to pass through nothing else now here's the interesting you might be like isn't that like ro well yes but ro has a problem that uh, bacteria and virus can go through specifically virus can go through salts generally get stuck by but uh, virus can that's why generally ro is always uh, coupled with basically uv light and there are other reasons also for that because like that ground becomes a breeding ground for bacteria and virus so you have to sterilize that water this puppy makes seawater you take the seawater in one step process it makes it 100 percent drinkable one step that's it like there is no uh, put ozone beforehand uh, like you know uh, put aerate the water do this or do that no one step that's it you pump the water you let it go through the filter that's it one step that is amazingly mind-boggling if this works out if this is technology is true and if it can be made cost effective you're talking about like humanity will forget like a water crisis like they will forget like again right now we can do this near the sea and many countries have already started investing in it it is energy intensive this puppy if it works out Forget about it, it's like, bro, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, water crisis would be something that uh, only, you know, good old science fiction movies had. So, it is quite amazing if graphene here works out. Now, super capacitor. Now, capacitor is basically a uh, device that stores static charge. It is basically electric. It does not change the electricity into uh, basically chemical energy like your battery does. However, uh, because uh, the, there is no conversion happening, your capacitor is very energy powerful. It's like, you know, it can dump megawatts of spike. However, it cannot store enough energy. Basically, it's like a, it's a big pipe. But it does not have enough depth while battery is a small pipe well, diameter wise but it's very long so it can keep going on for a long 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 time but does not have enough ampere basically if you are talking about a battery a battery can only give you let's say 10 ampere but it has one ampere capacity while you take a capacitor it would have a uh, hundred ampere or even thousand ampere but it will have capacity of 0.1 ampere so that's the problem of the current supercapacitor. now elect uh, basically because this is one uh, atom thick and they can make a whole complete design with less than three atoms you can expand the surface area will be expanded to a ludicrous point and in those sort of scenario uh, people are expecting it can reach a energy density where it is livering of uh, basically lithium ion batteries at that point forget about your electric cars like uh, nobody would even uh, think about electric cars it will be quote unquote your car nobody will even touch petrol it's like yeah uh, there is a one giant uh, you know power plug as tick goes to your bottom of your car your car is charging 10 seconds flat and yeah it lasts forever because there is no electrochemical interaction so it lasts for quote unquote forever so again magic technology and not to mention even if you don't want to make super capacitor you're like hey i like my lithium battery but i want to upgrade it right now you can buy this power bank uh, i have provided the video down below uh, where they have uh, embodied the basically embedded graphene into one of its electrodes and uh, charging ability of this battery is awesome basically 10,000 milliampere hour battery in less than 20 minutes zero to 100 percent charge it's like it it already did that so you can understand like it allows us to do magical things that we cannot even think of bulletproof armor because it's so many like in terms of tensile strength like let's say you wrapped it into a basically paper string and you're trying to pull it apart it's like kevlar will be like break 100 times before it even like oh are you pulling me or something like that so 
bulletproof vest it can make amazingly good bulletproof vest now paint wise now this is a very uh, interesting application this allows you to make a paint that is only few atoms thick basically you will not be able to see it other than that there is a tint i told you it absorbs the colors so there will be a tint to it but it will stop flat out stop water vapor to go through basically uh, water vapor that is in the air quote unquote moisture always goes through your paint again not in one day not in um, you know one year but 10 years it will go through and it will rust your part and uh, you will see like you know uh, you know paint chip falling apart and tada your metal is rusted so this will make indestructible paint flat out nothing to touch it then you are talking about electron because electron mobility is so damn high it can allow you to make much higher quality processor even in terms of the frequency basically right now our processor is like limited to 5 gigahertz you can't go higher than that and nobody would even want to go server processor are lower than 3 gigahertz because of energy efficiency reason this puppy can push it to like 10 12 gigahertz while keeping the energy efficiency same so again amazing thing that can be done using graphic so what happened to it well, if you type graphene and if you watch any video, it's like it will solve all of humanity's problems. So what the heck happened? Well, one reality you have to understand is that change takes time because you have to understand it. even if let's say you can beat silicon transistor in like let's say uh, two times by three times in terms of final output performance, people will not use change from it. Why? Simply because they have to redesign the whole infrastructure before they can make up single time of profit. So that capital investment is like people are like they are not worth it, flat out not worth it. So change takes time in 1970s and 1960s people were like excited about plastic and people were buying stocks in plastic companies did plastic change everything absolutely but it took its sweet time doing so graphene will also take its sweet time do not expect it to be like oh in 2020 graphene products in 2030 our lives have been saved it's not gonna happen if, at best case scenario is like 2050 you will see something like where where graphene will become as ubiquitous as uh, basically your plastic and that's also i'm i'm very optimistic about that so that you have to understand it change takes time and not to mention even plastic like the most commonly used thing we have took time and the only thing we did wrong with plastic we, we forgot that we're supposed to burn this thing we're supposed to burn it at high temperatures so it does not create any soot and all that jazz so again uh, plastics aside it took time now on top of that let's say you remove all that let's say there is some startup company like that startup company that made the power bank why haven't any you know startup have you know seized the opportunity before like you know hey instead of intel and amd like you know waiting it out seeing whether it's worth it, some startup company comes along and it's like voila so the sole reason we simply can't make graphene I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa how the heck do i'm making a whole video if we can't make it well we can make it in small amounts basically if somebody says hey give me one millimeter by one millimeter good heck you can buy a, like you know few millimeter square right now on amazon as a like you know uh, copper disc and you can use it in electron microscope to see it so we can make it it's just if some if you, uh, you ask it like uh, let's say a sheet uh, a4 sheet paper like paper long yeah no good luck good luck with that we simply cannot manufacture it as a graphene right now we are just making flakes of it and because you can see single flakes so maybe people are like hey there is this powder which is made out of graphene absolutely true but it should not be in powder form if we are making it like with absolute control and certainty it will be sold in rolls this is a graphene roll like this is a graphene sheet you're not supposed to sell it in powder because we cannot manufacture it like once we start manufacturing quote and we're growing it it grows to a certain point where it's like you know 10,000 atom across and 50,000 atom across after a while there is a defect and then another branch that and because of that defect it's no longer as strong the more defects you have the more or less it becomes like a paper so we simply can't make it right now as of now as of me making this video MIT have figured out a way where they can make at least a cellotape kind of scenario where they can make something like this a continuous roll of uh, graphene using uh, copper as a base material and I provided the video down below you can check it out and that should they are hoping they are theorizing that this structure can be made into larger one where they can finally reach a point yeah they can make a graphene that is sold not as a powder not as a flake but as a sheet where it's like this is a graphene sheet do whatever you want to do it you want to spool it up into a thread so you can make a you know bulletproof armor or you just want to laminate with it go you know go ahead with that so right now we cannot do that and even if we did that it will still take multiple years before uh, you will see graphing everywhere now here's the like uh, when i started the research on graphene most video made me uh, like realize hey graphene is a magical material but then i'm like uh, one part of me is like dude that's too good to be true it's too good to be true like a uh, graphene one material that can do every damn thing that did not sit well well with me but after a certain research i realized this Achilles heel basically there's a giant flaw in this structure 
it is ludicrously chemically reactive because it's single atom. I mean, think of it this way: if I give you one big wooden block to burn it, it's very difficult to burn it. But if I give you wood shavings, it's super easy to burn it. You can light it with normal match. Same goes on something uh, like this on a chemical level. If you make it one atom thick, atom can react from both sides. So translation, it catches fire quite easily. It is uh, like you can burn it at 350 degrees Celsius. Now you might be like, isn't that hot? Well, for human, yeah, you will be burnt much before that. But let's say you're talking about a car fire. Your car fire is like, bro, hold my beer. Like a car fire easily goes to 500 to 1000 degrees Celsius. So again, and even aluminium can hold its uh, hold itself together at like you know uh, 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. Before aluminium will turn into liquid, this thing will catch on fire. So this is one of, and like uh, what about bulletproof vest? Again, we have, uh, you know, pyrotechnic rounds, which are hotter than that. So you can just burn through same way, like, you know, you have shape charges. So after realizing this critical component that it can, it does not, it's not stable in terms of a uh, quote unquote uh, temperature wise, basically if it heats up, there is oxygen in your atmosphere, voila, it will catch on fire. So people are saying like, hey, we can use that to make heat shields. I'm like, you have to impregnate it with something else. And at that point, you will not have graphene. You will have like graphene powder much with you or something, but you will not have raw graphene. And so that it makes sense because if you're going through atmosphere and you're heating it up like, you know, um, thousands of degrees, Celsius, it's going to burn like a wood. So that is a very critical aspect. Just imagine this in every time you're thinking about something uh, because of battery or electrical contracts and all that. Supercapacitors, when they short out, they sometimes get very hot. Like you will see capacitors that have a temperature rating on them, like, you know, uh, 50 degrees Celsius, uh, 95 degrees Celsius, 110 degrees Celsius and all that jazz. So understand that, that this temperature is not high enough for humanity's use for most scenarios. Again, for water purifier and all that, awesome if it works out. If somebody can figure out how to make it in large enough, mass producible enough, awesome. But right now, expecting like, you know, this to make our planes will be made out of this. Hell no. Hell no. Just, just no. Now, all of the products that you see in the market that are using graphene, like uh, graphene shoes and all that jazz, they are using alloy. Basically, they are taking the graphene powder, graphene, uh, basically flakes and all that, and they're binding it with rubber. Now, is it a good thing to do? Absolutely. I mean, like we, we, we make alloys of metal because it improves our, uh, like, you know, metal ability. Same goes with uh, merging graphene with anything, specifically rubber. Rubber and graphene, they go together uh, really well right now. So there are shoes that are supposed to last much longer. Uh, they should not crack over, uh, like, you know, over the stress period and all that so there is a tangible advantage right now that you can achieve uh, like you know in 2020 going for your new year shoes you can buy a shoe that would be like graphene based and will last longer than a normal rubber one but it's not raw graphene basically it's not something uh, where you can do it's a graphene product it's just a graphene alloy material and not to mention making a paint let's say you made your wall paint using graphene fire risk like your stove runs hotter than that so there is a very severe fire fire risk because of that so once i started realizing that fire one then i realized that's the reason why not every tom dick and harry jumping into it because there are things that are much hotter than that your car engine is like bro bro my exhaust pipe is hotter than that so it's not magical do not think of it as like one stop solution for humanity's need we do not have that kind of luxury so this was my presentation on graphing. I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me an extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.